everybody. I'm going to stop sharing for just a second here to introduce myself. I'm really excited to be here for our event on exploring the master of divinity. Thank you for joining us this in what's considered early evening here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, we have a panel of incredible MDiv students who are with us in addition to our Dean Teddy Hickman Maynard, who will be joining us in just a little bit. Before we officially get started, I want to give you a brief overview of the agenda for today's presentation, and then we'll hit the road. So um, I'll start by just providing us with a quick sort of 10 minute overview of Harvard Divinity School, introducing the Master of Divinity, talking about our application requirements, um, and then we'll go ahead and have Dean Teddy Hickman Maynard, who will take over the conversation with our panel of students. So without further ado, go ahead and reshare my screen here and we'll get started with the 10 minute presentation. And I will also go ahead and turn my camera off just for the duration of this 10 minute portion of the PowerPoint. So as I mentioned, my name is Alessandra Ludeking and I'm the admissions officer here at HDS. I've been with Harvard Divinity School for about a year and a half now. It's been an absolute joy. I'm originally from Miami, Florida, and I got my bachelor's degree at Boston College in English and International Studies. Um, so happy to be with you all today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get started. Um, so I'll start by providing a brief overview of HDS. And at any point, if you do have any questions for us, please chat them in the Q&A box. We will definitely reserve time for those questions um, at, at a later point during today's session. All right. So HDS, what is it? Well, Harvard Divinity School is the first divinity school in the United States. And very importantly, we are non-sectarian or non-religiously affiliated. And we are a school of religious and theological studies that educates our students in both the academic study of religion and also provide them with the practical skills and training needed for leadership in religious, governmental, and a wide range of service organizations. We have over 45 faith traditions represented in our student body, including, of, co of course, those who are not religiously affiliated. And we have over 500 recurring worship services, which makes HDS the most religiously pluralistic divinity school in the world. We have four degree programs, which lead to infinite pathways. Today, you'll be hearing specifically about our MDiv, our Master of Divinity. And we have alumni in every field and industry who all value ethical leadership, religious literacy, and mission-driven work. Our graduates from HDS really often describe these special skills, soft skills that they develop, such as deep listening, ethical reasoning, bridging divides successfully, and navigating difficult conversations, all as part of their HDS experience. So that's sort of the brief overview of HDS, bird's eye view of it. Now let's chat a little bit about the Master of Divinity. I'll only introduce it, of course, because you'll have uh, Dean Teddy Hickman Maynard and of course our MDiv panelists who can give you much more rich detail and experience here. But just so you take a look at it here, the, the MDiv is a three-year program. And we like to say that it's for our 21st century spiritual leaders. So students in the MDiv program are learning the art of ministry, very broadly conceived which includes skills such as preaching, pastoral care, and community organizing. And they link the academic theory from their classrooms with practice in fieldwork placements and settings around the globe. And I'll talk a little bit more about what fieldwork is in just a second. Originally, the MDiv prepared students for uh, parish ministry, more formal ordination. And of course, it still does today for those who are pursuing that vocation but really fewer than 40% of our MDiv graduates pursue formal ordination or parish ministry. As I mentioned earlier, we, we really do conceive of ministry very broadly. And some students in the MDiv are interested in ministry with that sort of a lowercase m, which is defined as service and commitment to interreligious understanding and dialogue, which is truly applicable to any career. Important to note that the MDiv is a necessary credential for those interested in ordination. 
um, in, in a particular faith tradition or chaplaincy. But as again, other MDiv graduates do pursue a wide range of fields where ethical leadership and interfaith competency would be an asset. Uh, we do have generous institutional grant aid that is available through the Master of Divinity. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, field education is a really central part of the Master of Divinity at Harvard Divinity School. As you see here, our definition of ministry is very broad. Again, it's that call to serve others uh, through traditional ordination, if that's, uh, if that's the pathway you're interested in, through chaplaincy work, it can be nonprofit, doctoral work, many other occupations. Um, the goal is to provide our students with that practical experience where they're able to also reflect on that practical experience and integrate their reflections with their coursework, all of which is intended for that authentic exploration of ministry. Uh, students in the Master of Divinity are required to complete a minimum of two units of supervised field education, and each unit for us represents about 350 to 400 hours of field experience. And you can think of field experience as almost an internship placement. Um, so this field experience does include one hour of weekly one-on-one -on -one supervision, uh, which again is sort of a great way to integrate you know, your growth as, as a leader in, uh, in ministry. So uh, what's really great, Harvard Divinity School, we're so lucky that we have over a hundred different sites for field education placements that our students are able to choose from. These include experiences in hospitals, churches, schools, and many other service or justice organizations, um, synagogues, really so many settings. And if the 100 plus placements doesn't necessarily align with what your goals or interests may be, then you are more than welcome to work with our Office of Ministry Studies to suggest your own field ed placement, including international opportunities as well, if that's of interest to you. So again, please ask our student panelists about their experiences. Please ask Dean Teddy Hickman Maynard if you do have any further questions about this particular requirement. As I mentioned earlier, the MDiv is eligible for generous institutional grant aid. At Harvard Divinity School, we award two types of aid, need-based and merit. The vast majority of our students will earn need-based aid. We have only a very small pool of aid that is awarded via merit on the basis of the overall strength of a candidate's application. Important to note that our grant aid is only available to Master of Theological Studies and MDiv applicants, students. Um, our base packages for institutional grant aid start at bare minimum covering three quarters tuition. And then we do offer full tuition in addition to full tuition grants plus a $12,000 living stipend for those who demonstrate the most need. This is um, need-based aid. And if you are part of the very small pool of MTS and MDiv students that are awarded merit aid, um, this typically includes a full tuition scholarship with a modest stipend ranging anywhere between $12,000 to $20,000. Um, all applicants to the MTS and MDiv programs are automatically considered for merit aid, so there is no separate application process for this and merit aid awards are determined by the admissions office, by the admissions committee. Need-based aid, on the other hand, does require a separate financial aid application, and this aid is determined by the office of financial aid. So there is a clear distinction between both types. Um, all right, so that's sort of brief overview of our financial aid options. And then of course, how to actually apply to our programs. I'm not gonna go into detail about the requirements for each of these separate components of the application process. We have a ton of virtual events this fall that will go into detail on these, but if you do have questions about it, feel free to chat us or send us an email uh, and we'll get to you to that. But important to note that our application does close the first week of January. It's been open now for a few weeks. We open in mid-September and um, we will, uh, we will extend invitations to interview starting around late January, early February, and all admissions decisions will be released in mid-March. Um, and this is, again, sort of an overview of the application requirements and components. Um, let us know if you have any questions. 
And then if you do have any questions that are not answered um, during this event, please try to keep your questions specific to the Master of Divinity. So if you do have questions about the other components like the application process or financial aid, I will ask that you email those to us directly um, via admissions at HDS. You can also connect with a current student uh, through the Ask Students inbox and our blog and Instagram are really a wonderful wealth of resources for campus life, community life, academic offerings, all the wonderful things at Harvard Divinity School. Um, all right, so that's plenty of talking from me. I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce here our moderator, my very esteemed colleague, Dean Teddy Hickman Maynard, who is our Associate Dean for Ministry Studies and our wonderful student panelists, CJ Fowler, Kenneth Moles, Chantal Sanchez. If you could please uh, turn your cameras on, unmute yourselves, and I'll go ahead and mute myself. I've been talking for too long now and, and let you all take it from here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alessandra. It's um, wonderful to be here with you all this evening, all of you who have um, joined us for this session. I wanna thank Chantal and CJ and Kenneth for offering their time and for sharing their stories. And so that's gonna be the bulk of what we do together. I want you to hear from them. I have instructed all three of them that this is not a sell job. This is not uh, an opportunity for us to pressure you into coming to HDS. We genuinely want you to, to learn as much about what this experience feels like for students who are on the inside so that you can have as much information as you need to make the right choice for you about where the best place is for you to continue your journey, um, whatever journey that may be that you're on. So we're gonna jump right into it and uh, I'll go in, in the order of, uh, uh, let's do alphabetical order of your first names. So we're gonna start with Chantel and I'm gonna ask you what drew you to Harvard Divinity School and why did you end up choosing the MDiv degree? That's a tricky question on that last part. <laughs> um, so uh, what drew me to Harvard Divinity School, HDS, um, was 100% this aspect of being non-sectarian um, and very interdisciplinary. Um, in my undergrad experience, I had um, made every way possible to be as comparative theology as I could possibly with a focus on South Asia, uh, South Asian religion specifically. Um, I actually went to undergrad at Boston College, so just across the river from here, uh, which is a Catholic school. So uh, there were times where I had to kind of push a little harder than I would like. So um, thinking about uh, grad school, um, having, just a wide variety um, of access uh, to different perspectives was definitely something I really um, needed and wanted. Um, and yes, Alessandra, uh, when I heard you were also at BC, I was like, Eagles. <laughs> um, so uh, that was definitely a big part. And um, actually, HDS was the only divinity school I applied to. I applied to um, the rest were just like international studies, comparative stuff. Um, so HDS sold me in many ways than one. Um, and in terms of the MDiv degree itself, I actually started as an MTS um, student and I should have graduated this past May, actually. I switched uh, into the MDiv degree um, in an exceptional late time. Uh, I didn't get the official notice of um, being approved for the switch until January. I had submitted um, my request to transfer in mid-November, uh, close to the end um, of November. So then we had the long break and I didn't get that um, until then. And uh, the, the switch or my wish to switch um, had a number of reasons kind of um, all really embedded in there. Um, one was um, just the first year of online uh, of school was online for me um, and having just uh, one year of kind of like academic work online, no matter how much I love school, it really made me hate school uh, to be blunt. Um, and then uh, my interests were kind of um, 
kind of changing, but I didn't know into really what, and um, also uh, kind of just a, a will of God and that the advisor I was supposed to be working with very closely here actually um, passed away the summer I was matriculating in. So that also really untethered me as I didn't know what I would be doing, who I would be working with. And then plus Zoom, I didn't have the capacity to even try to figure that out. Um, and so I kind of was just real uh, in a swirl of a hurricane of nothingness the first year. Um, but then it was the second year um, and also built off, I will say the highlight of my first year was uh, the Harvard Buddhist community, which kind of really kept me alive, kept me still at this school. Um, if I didn't have that, I would probably drop out. Um, and so um, I really clung to this Buddhist community into my second year. Um, and I kind of just tried to switch gears and I was like, all right, we're throwing off the past. I'm gonna, I need to do something new. I have a lot of passions and interests. Um, so let's figure it out, let's find it. Uh, that was also, um, a benefit of HDS that I knew I would be walking into um, in that it is so, um, I guess, like the infrastructure itself is just um, so exploratory that I knew that, say, even if I do change down the lane, because I changed it a lot in undergrad, I knew HDS would be an environment that would be able to. And then what do you know, I actually needed that support. And so HDS was there for it. Um, and so uh, really, I just was a little dismayed by academia, uh, given a Zoom year, and really uh, loving my spiritual community and just different uh, communities in general, exploring different classes and really being open uh, to discovery. And I found a new interest that is now my thesis and probably uh, the direction my whole life will take. Um, every single moment I live, breathe, and eat like what I now focus on, which is just like the power of art in so many uh, different aspects of community building, revolution, and um, movement culture, and just a wide variety of things. You can see I'm already um, fired up about it, <laughs> just like the color of my hair right now. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I realized that uh, I, I was drawn more towards uh, a communal um, scholar practitioner model that I feel uh, that I felt seemed to go more into line with the uh, master of divinity. And then it also did help that every single one of my close friends here was an MDiv. Um, so I was like, hmm, uh, kind of thinking about like, who am I hanging out with? Uh, that tells me something too. Um, and then it was just like, oh, well, duh, what, why have I been denying it so long? So that's why it took me a little bit. I'm a little stubborn um, and try to stick, stay to the path I want or I thought I was going to be on. And so I just poured my heart into that application to switch. And um, yeah, that, that's kind of what drew me. It was definitely my own experience navigating my own personal and academic and spiritual needs and wishes for the world. Um, and then also being able to kind of see MDiv work in the people around me and also in a lot of the content, um, regardless if it was like purely academic or um, like an MDiv type class, it didn't matter. Um, I, I could, I, I, uh, I gleaned that MDiv kind of culture, if you will, um, in every class I was in and that's really what sold me, um, kind of like a twist of uh, twist or turn of my heart, I would say. Um, so yeah, that's that's my MDiv story, and now I'm in M MDiv third year in the introductory to ministry studies class, uh, and I'll pass it back to Dean Teddy. Thank you so much, Chantel. Uh, CJ, same question: What drew you to Harvard Divinity School? And why did you apply to the MDiv program? Um, yeah, I think um, Chantel, when you mentioned the non-sectarian aspect of HDS, that was also a really big part of my decision-making. Um, but coming at it, I think from the angle of, I'm uh, on the ordination track within the American Baptist Church. Um, and I first began to feel and discern a call during my undergrad years. And 
when uh, in order to get ordained, uh, as Alessandra mentioned during the um, presentation, you do have to get an MDiv um, or some equivalent uh, sort of graduate degree. And ordination candidates have a lot of options. You can go to seminaries, you can um, do sort of like a practical, um, a practical component that ultimately license you after a couple of years of doing ministry in the field, um, or you can do an MDiv. And um, I think that when I was approaching uh, my graduate study, um, I thought about all of those different options and was really drawn to the divinity school model, which there are very few of them uh, in the United States um, that sort of blend not only theological education, but the academic study of religion, uh, which is something that I'm also extremely passionate about. Um, and so casting a wide net applied to all the divinity schools. Um, and as I was then making the decision about where would be the best place, I think that Harvard stands out really because of its multi-religious commitment. Um, there's nowhere else that's doing the kind of like multi-religious ministry work that uh, I think that HDS is trying to hold. Um, and I uh, and as it, thinking about uh, the kind of minister I want to be in the ministry that I want to do um, is in, inextricably tied to justice. And if we're going to be doing justice work, I felt that it was really important to get that multi-religious experience to know that we're going to be working across um, faith lines and we're going to be working um, in pluralistic context because we live in a pluralistic world. Um, and so uh, I think the MDiv was pretty set in stone because it was the next track for me. But when it came to Harvard Divinity in particular, it was that multi-faith uh, community that we're able to learn from and grow in um, that was really the selling point for me. Yes, so uh, the funny thing is I was not even looking towards Harvard Divinity at all. It wasn't in my foresight at all. Um, actually, my father called me uh, before I graduated, a um, couple months before uh, my first semester of my senior year ended at Morehouse. And he was like, hey, you know, are you on track for graduation? I'm like, yeah, I'm past all my classes. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a graduate. And um, he said, well, you know, the Lord told me that um, you, you need to go to Harvard Divinity. I'm like, what? You know, I never thought about it. He's like, you know, put the application in. And um, so it was actually my father's voice that actually led me to even submitting an application. And being a stubborn individual, I dragged my feet uh, submitting the application because I was so in love with Atlanta and the culture that was there. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to go back up north. I like I feel like the South is in my heart. Uh, so I, I kind of put the application in, got it in like the last day. And, you know, when I got in, I, I got into HDS later than the other school I applied to, which was Emory. And so I was like, oh, well, you know, I got into Emory, boom, you know, I can just stay in Atlanta, still get my MDiv and, you know, keep moving and doing what I'm doing with my community and the church I was at out there in Atlanta. And when I got my uh, acceptance letter to HDS, um, I was like a little overwhelmed um, because it wasn't just I got accepted. But it was just like, hey, you got accepted and you don't have to pay tuition and we're going to look out for you and give you a stipend. So it was like, wow, OK. And um, I was still very stubborn, like, oh, I just I just want to stay in Atlanta. I like it here, comfortable here. And I went to go take a nap and like I just really felt the Lord just saying Harvard, Harvard, Harvard. And I was like, OK, call my dad was like, hey, you know, got in. He's like, see, this is what I told you. Uh, and that was really what brought me to the Div School. And um, when it pertains to my what what made me choose MDiv track, um, just for my context, uh, the MDiv track is heavily respected um, in the the Christian context. And I knew that I respected a lot of those individuals. That, that took that route. I loved the um, engagement that they had, their hermeneutic with the text, um, their viewpoints, um, even their theology and, and the way that they critically think about the, the Bible uh, was something that I was always 
that I always gravitated towards. So when, uh, so, so MDiv was always on my mind, um, partly because, you know, being in ministry, I didn't care for those who weren't as educated um, in that space, uh, not because they couldn't get educated, but rather because they refused to get educated. So I kind of told myself like, hey, if I'm going to do ministry, um, I want to make sure that I am learned in this area, um, that I'm proven in this area. And um, so that's kind of what drew me to the uh, MDiv route and what, what brought me to Harvard. These are powerful stories. Um, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty right now. I'm, I want to find out what you have found the most challenging about your experience. Let's, let's be real honest with the people tonight. <laughs> what has been the most challenging? Uh, let's go in reverse order. Kenneth, I'm gonna stay with you. <laughs> Straightforward and honest, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Uh, I think coming from a historically black college and university and re-implementing myself in a predominantly white space was probably one of the one of the first difficulties that I knew I was going to be walking into. Um, and for me, I didn't I didn't understand the privilege I had at an HBCU being around black people and what that support gave to me. Um, not saying that HDS isn't a supportive environment, but there's a different support structure that people of color need. And so I had to be very intentional and I'm still building that out, but finding community and developing community was one of the, one of the more difficult things that I had to do. Um, I'm grateful for the education I had and the cultivation I had at Morehouse because they told us like, hey, we're not preparing you to just be in these predominantly black spaces. We're preparing you for whatever you're called to do at the highest level, at the greatest level that we're preparing you for those spaces. So when I got to HDS, I was like, okay, I know I'm here. I know why I'm here. Um, and I know that I have the tools to be successful here. Um, but it was difficult for me having to even sometimes advocate for my blackness um, in the classroom and making certain students that have blinders on aware of their blinders, aware of their blind spots, aware of their privilege, um, aware of their bias, aware of their prejudice. Um, and I used to tell, you know, a couple of my friends at the disc school, I was like, yeah, you know, from this reading, I already know I'm probably going to want to flip the classroom upside down when I get in there. And, um, and, and I did that because I was like, okay, well, I feel uncomfortable in this space, um, not because I don't belong here, but I feel uncomfortable because I know that some of you all are willing to stay the same. So I'm going to make sure that if you never wish to change, I'm going to put a thought in your face that is that you're unable to move away from. And that's going to address an area that you need to grow in. And so that was something that I took a took on myself. Um, but I think that it made a little bit, it made it a little more difficult for me. Uh, because I have some people, you know, when I'm in the class, they're expecting me to kind of be like, hey, you know, say something against, you know, something that was a little off, 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 off putting in class. And so that that was one thing that I found a little, a little difficult in this space was just advocating uh, for certain thoughts, certain frameworks that aren't as prevalent in this space. But um, I will say HDS has made the strides um, to make me feel uh, like I'm, I belong even the more in this space um, since being here. So yeah, it's been great, but yet difficult. So, How about you, what's been what's been the toughest challenge? I think I tell anyone who asks me about coming to HDS and specifically if they're wanting to do ministry or doing an MDiv that it is a choose your own adventure. Um, 
And I think that that can be an incredible gift because this place is somewhere where you're going to encounter the widest variety of classes, professors with fascinating and unique expertise. And, and there's just a panoply of options that is presented to you. Um, and I think both myself and other people, uh, whether you're somebody who comes in and is like, I need to get ordained, I need to check these boxes, or you're somebody that comes in and is like, I don't know, I feel a compulsion towards doing good and I wanna do service. I want it to do it spiritually. Anywhere on that spectrum, you're going to encounter that, that with as many options, um, you are, it's a little bit overwhelming and you kind of have to be on top of your own stuff. There is so much support that you can get, um, whether it's through the Office of Ministry Studies or through the amazing coordinators for field education. Um, but at the same time, I think something that's been challenging for me is balancing, is knowing that like, I have these requirements that I need to meet over here and using the and, and using the extremely wide array of resources to be able to meet those requirements. Um, just kind of being very self-initiated, very self-driven and um, being able to stay on top of your own stuff and know what you need to do the ministry that you want to do and making this place work for you, I think is, is both a challenge and an opportunity um, that HGS presents. Thank you for that. Uh, Chantel, how about you? Yeah, so um, kind of with my own uh, story to the MDiv, I think um, I have like two answers. One is more related to my MTS area. Um, and then now as an MDiv, um, so the first uh, like year and a half, I would say, um, my biggest difficulty at HDS was, uh, which was very specific um, to, uh, my particular focus um, in South Asian religions and particularly um, the study of India um, and Hinduism. And the fact that um, at, in the past uh, year, and uh, like almost two years, a lot of like the Hindu studies program um, in general was so um, only focused on the ancient. Um, and so I, I very much wanted to study modern contemporary Hinduism and practice of people living currently. Um, I was studying um, Hin Hindi, one of the spoken languages of India for that very reason. Uh, but a lot of the courses were uh, translation based or um, kind of looking at um, ancient texts. And believe me, I do love that. I am a South Asia scholar through and through. Um, however, um, my heart has always been in the community um, and I, I, I want to uh, study a people. I will say it is changing now and I'm kind of a little jealous uh, because um, we do have, a, 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 we hired a new um, Hindu uh, studies professor who's doing just that. Um, so if there's any uh, South Asia scholars uh, looking, there, there's contemporary Hinduism studying a little bit more now, um, but definitely that was a, a big hang up in the very beginning. And um, uh, a big reason why I was having such a um, kind of a whole life, midlife crisis basically, because uh, I, I, uh, I didn't have support there in that regard. Um, and um, luckily as I've shifted now into something else, um, uh, focus in general, um, I feel very nourished at least uh, in that regard. Um, and so I think one of uh, my current, um, I guess, like, and since I've been here, um, kind of like difficulties at HDS, um, I will say I do echo uh, Kenneth's um, kind of uh, point about um, Harvard in general. It is still a predominantly white institution, um, almost in, uh, and I, I identify as Buddhist. And so um, often I am the only uh, person of color at most of our um, Buddhist weekly meetings. Um, and I do notice sometimes. Um, and uh, yeah, so like diversity within uh, spiritual, uh, I guess, spiritual communities has been something I've noticed. Um, uh, and sometimes I feel like uh, I feel it more than others, um, but that's just more of a, a side note. Uh, but I think my uh, my biggest um, kind of, I don't know, like I wouldn't say hardship, but uh, difficulty is as much as uh, HDS does a great job of, you know, um, 
really uh, hammering the idea of ministry and our social justice initiatives and uh, really being with the communities and doing the change, I feel like I want even more, uh, it, a more um, direct relationship between the Divinity School, the student body, and the community outside uh, just around us. Uh, and then let's like, I, I, I feel um, that we talk so much about uh, this great work we can be doing in our communities and things like that. And that's why we're here at this school, especially within the MDiv degree. Um, and uh, sometimes it feels like uh, we're just talking about it and gearing up so that we can just go leave um, after we graduate and then go implement it. Um, but I think, uh, especially now that, uh, especially just when we talk about the land work currently on, I think we not only need to do that once we graduate, but we need to do it immediately while we're here. And I feel uh, that's like something I would, I wish was a little bit more emphasized. And I know uh, with the our field educations, um, we do get to go out into the field. Um, however, I, I feel like we need, we need more of it. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that's just maybe that's an extra personal thing, but I, I think if we're going to live in our ministry in every single aspect, uh, we really have to just make that connection so concrete and not just a two, uh, two rounds of field education for the degree. We need it to be just baked into like a daily life experience here at Harvard. Um, yeah, so I think that's just my uh, my own kind of dance with HDS. We we dance around it a little bit, do a little bit more, but I think we could even go deeper. Primary questions that people submitted beforehand. So this, the the prospective students who are on the line with us right now sent some questions ahead of time, and the most the the, the question that came up the most was about field education. Um, we do require two units of field education, and a unit is either a full academic year or an intensive summer placement. Uh, most Master of Divinity programs require one unit. We require two. So if you're here for the MDiv, you're going to be spending more time in field ed than at other schools. That's something you should know going in. Um, but then there are those uh, who choose to do even more. So uh, I think the record is five. There's a student who did five units of field ed. So basically they did every school year and the two summers in between their first and, and in between their first and second and between their second and third. So they were in field education throughout their entire program. I think that might be a little much for most students, but that's just to show you the sort of the outward edges of what's possible. Um, but since we have, actual flesh and blood students with us. Um, I wanna hear about you all's experience in field education. So um, let's start with CJ this time. Tell us about your field day. Yeah, so I've uh, only done one unit, of, uh, one of my units of field ed so far. Um, and I actually, on the advice of Dean Teddy, came in my first year and immediately hit the ground running uh, with field education. Uh, which I cannot recommend enough uh, to people coming in. If you know what you want to do, or if there's a site that really excites you. Um, I think that, so my placement was at uh, Old Cambridge Baptist Church, uh, which is a Baptist church here uh, near the square. Um, it's where I'm going to be doing my ordination. And it was an incredible experience to have what you're doing in the classroom. Like the theological education is rich. It's beautiful. Um, but I think that for me, at least my first year, especially like having that grounding in a community of faith, training myself to do the very specific uh, things that my future vocation will require of me uh, was was incredible. And so, uh, and I know that other people have had similar experiences in even not in church contexts or in uh, whether they're at nonprofits or they're doing college chaplaincy or things like that. It, it's it's really, I feel like where you get the training that you get a taste of what you're gonna be doing. Cause we're all here because we care about um, doing whatever ministry means to you. Um, and then field ed is, is, it is a lot of work but I at least have found it to be incredibly nourishing because it's like, oh, 
it, it is sort of a reminder of why I'm here and a reminder of uh, like why we're even learning the things that we're learning in the classroom. I hope that was, was that kind of what you were looking for, Dean Teddy, in terms of description? You've been doing, I uh, feel that. Oh, sorry, was that a question? I, I, the first part of what you said cut out. Um, your field ed experience. I'm so sorry, the first part of your question dropped out again. I'm, I was saying that it can, Chantel can be next in talking oh, about field ed. Whoopsies, yeah, I, I, we, we, we missed that little first part, uh, critical part. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it, this ties with my hard uh, or just my previous answer because of how enriching it has been uh, for my field experience that I uh, just completed this past summer. Um, and uh, I worked with uh, the Poor People's Campaign of Massachusetts, as well as the national chapter. Um, and that was from the get go, I just jumped right in and learned so much about organizing and grassroots um, kind of, I guess you could say ideology and like, how does that work? How does horizontal leadership work? Um, and we were exploring all parts of Boston. So uh, not just Cambridge and Somerville where uh, HDS is kind of located. Uh, I was going down um, to Dorchester, Roxbury, uh, what people, uh, uh, and I'd call like real Boston, um, not just downtown, because uh, I've been here now seven years, um, and I had only really explored uh, real Boston uh, in the past year or so uh, due to my field, and, um, and so I, I will say that is a big problem with just university systems here in Boston in general, but um, anyways, um, I, I think uh, that uh, this particular field that experience has really shaped and kind of edified just what I see my outlook um, on life is really, what I wanna do in the future and how really my academic work here, my, my own um, practice as a Buddhist really ties into just so many uh, greater aspects of life and that I can really actively use my spiritual location, my, uh, my identity, as like both a scholar academic what have you uh, into real life work that is meaningful for not just a community but also myself in a way that I didn't realize just even a little bit before then I uh, I'm a first gen college student first gen graduation or gra graduate student so I've had to learn what the heck this whole process is every single year um, and every year I think I've figured it out and I haven't. Um, and I think uh, that aspect of field ed, of just really opening up of what actually it could be in the future for me, both um, or just in, a, in numerous ways, career, vocation, academia, all of that was a lot more realized and tangible is when we think about like oh you're gonna graduate what job are you gonna get I don't know what the myriad of names of jobs can be I didn't know even that like organizer or this that or the other could be a thing I could actually do in the future and feel that has just opened that up for me um and uh, uh and uh kind of almost like I, I, I this is a funny way of it, but like ruined my life in the fact that uh, there's no way of going back. Now I've seen the world and um, I'm in it and I, I, I got to keep going. So I think uh, my field that has just uh, experience has been so fantastic. I continue to do it now uh, on a volunteer basis and I want to do more of it. And uh, that's kind of why I emphasize wanting HDS to really just be extra community oriented for not just MDivs, but everyone who's here. Um, I think it's just essential uh, to our mission as a school um, and uh, field that really helped me see that a lot and really just uncovered so much that I didn't even know about myself or maybe I thought was down in there, but I didn't think could actually 
come into the real world um, of whatever we conceive it to be. But no, uh, everything is possible. And that's uh, one of the biggest lessons I've learned. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, discussion with you and then I want to I'm looking at the time I want to make sure that our our, uh, our attendees have a chance to ask you all questions directly so please tell us about your field ed experience and I'll Got ask you, you uh, to, uh, I, I, think of your questions while Kenneth is speaking yeah um, I don't have too much to say about field ed because I'm actually in my first uh, unit of field ed but I will say, um, since kind of being at my placement, I'm at a uh, a church called Jubilee Christian Church, which is a really great environment for me. Um, and one thing that drew me towards that ministry was that it was different from the context I grew up in. Um, so this is my belief that like if you never experience something new or you never experience something unfamiliar, you'll never be able to grow. Um, so I intentionally put myself in a place where I can grow with a different group of, of people and build community um, while doing ministry, while doing life with people, while doing life with the people who are doing life with other people. And, and so for me, being someone that wants to go into like a church context and do pastoral ministry, it gives me the other side that a lot don't see on a Sunday basis. And then I'm able to take my experiences, work with my supervisor and work through some of the theological um, implications, the theological deficiencies that I may be having when it comes to that work. And then even taking those experiences and bringing it into meaning making and having a community there where I, if there are uh, different things events that happen that I want to sit and kind of walk through to kind of see what was, wh how, how, how can I find, what, what can I pull out of this thing that I experienced, what I saw at a service, you know, which is, which is powerful because a lot of people never get to do ministry and process ministry or never get to do work and process the work that they're doing. Um, so that's one thing that I appreciate about what HDS does here. a link to a list of field education sites. A lot of those sites are uh, sort of historical sites that have, that have been active for, for decades, but every single semester we open up avenues and relationships with new sites that are not even listed on that, on that site. I'll give just a few examples just from this past summer. Um, we, have, we had a student working at a museum doing a project called Imagining Justice, Spiritual Practices and Community Healing at the museum. We had several students working at shelters, um, uh, homeless shelters and shelters for domestic violence survivors. We had a student working at Open Spirit Center, which is a site for um, meditation practices. Another student was at Insight Meditation Community uh, of Western Massachusetts. We had a student at the Society of Biblical Literature working on translation uh, issues there. We had another student working with an Islamic scholar, helping this Islamic scholar to turn, uh, to, to make his teachings more accessible beyond the scholarly community and take his teachings online in a way that the, the wider community was able to, uh, was able to access it. Um, certainly every semester we have a lot of students doing hospital chaplaincy, and higher ed chaplaincy. Um, and we also had a student working at a project called, What Do You Think About Waste? Looking at waste management in the city of Cambridge and how to educate people about how to uh, properly interact with their waste so as to promote um, environmental justice. So there's just, there are so many different ways that you can engage in field education. Um, it's hard to, to describe the diversity of, of the opportunities without giving a list of the 200 things students have done in the last year and a half, but it is a really important part of our program. Um, in this last uh, few minutes we have with each other, I do want to give um, those who are attending an opportunity to ask questions directly. And I'll ask Alessandra, are we doing that with raised hands or should they type it in the chat? Uh, Dean Teddy, they should 
they should chat it in the Q&A box, but I did enable the chat feature as well, so they can chat questions too. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we do have the Q&A box uh, open. And the first question is, how are students with less comprehensive religious education or backgrounds guided to explore, define, and achieve their personal and professional goals? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I will say that we are, we are a non-sectarian um, school, so it's not, it, it's not required that you come to HDS with a religious background. 21% of MDiv students um, uh, articulate that they have no uh, particular religious tradition or spiritual tradition. So that's a good percentage of our student body within the MDiv program um, do not claim a particular religious tradition. And among the other 80%, we have Christians and Buddhists and Unitarian Universalists and Jews and Muslims, people who are interreligiously affiliated, we have Hindu students, students who consider themselves spiritual but not religious. We have students who are exploring indigenous forms of spirituality and meaning making. And we have some students who are, who are pagan. And so I think one of the students said earlier that HDS is a kind of choose your own adventure uh, experience, which is to say that nothing is, you're not, nothing is restricted from you, but it also takes a, a certain degree of agency on your part to seek out that which you're, which, you're, which you're looking for. In terms of your own spiritual practice, if you yourself are trying to explore and discover, the beautiful thing about HDS is that we're a community that shares and witnesses with one another. One example is our weekly noon service, where every week, and I think, Chantel, you're on the committee, aren't you? Are you on the noon service committee? <laughs> it's funny you say that. No, I'm not. I've oh. just done, I've done three noon services. Actually, I hosted noon service today. Uh, three noon services in four weeks. It must be a record. I know. I feel. I feel like I always see you up there. Um, <laughs> but the the noon service is a weekly gathering where different um, students within the community who do subscribe to a particular religious tradition or practice share uh, a practice out of their tradition with the larger community. And we bear witness to one another's practices. We bear witness to one another's beliefs. And we, we have something that we say at the beginning that, that basically allows everyone to, to say, this is our opportunity for you to share with us the truth of who you are so that we can learn, so that we can grow. What's happening in this space right now may not be my thing, but I'm related to you. I'm in community with you. And so I care about your thing and I wanna learn from, from you about it. So as a result of that weekly sharing, Every student is exposed to a multiplicity of religious practices and wisdom traditions and ways of being in touch with the spirit and with yourself and with others. And students regularly, you know, find themselves within one of these groups. Um, we do have a, a chaplain and director of religious life and a religious life office that uses student chaplains as well. That, that helps students to connect with the different groups. So there are opportunities for connecting, but it is it does take you going and exposing yourself and being willing to put yourself out there and, and see what's available and then join in with something that interests you, something that you think you might wanna explore. We, are, we are regularly have students that are sort of in between traditions. I was raised Jewish, but I'm, I'm exploring Islam. Or I was raised Muslim, but I'm exploring Hinduism. And, and you can go, you don't have to be a part of the Harvard Buddhist community to go to one of their meetings and say, I'm interested in Buddhism. You don't have to be Presbyterian to go to HDS Presbyterian meetings and say, I'm interested in Presbyterianism, right? So a lot of it is the culture at HDS that because we are a multi-religious context, we're constantly sharing and talking about who we are to people who are not like us. And so it almost makes exploring easier because everyone kind of assumes that we're in a learning space where we don't assume that other people know what we do or who we are, or how we do it. Um, yeah. Um, the next question, what does the capstone research project for, um, for first year MDivs look like? Um, 
I heard that all MDiv students are required to take a class that results in this project. Okay, good question. So there's kind of, when you talk about the, 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 the capstone or what we call the senior seminar is for third year students. We also have an introduction to ministry studies, which is what you usually would take in your first year that has a ministry project associated with it. So I'm gonna let um, our panelists talk about that. Uh, Chantel is actually in the unique situation of taking intro to ministry studies and the senior seminar at the same time. So I'm gonna let Kenneth and maybe CJ talk about IMS and then maybe Chantel, you can talk about the senior seminar project. Yeah, so uh, IMS last year was a, a fun class for me. Uh, I really enjoyed it because it was um, really gave you the space and it even goes back to the last question of like defining yourself, right? There are a lot of people who come in and they really don't know what religion is. They don't really have a, any religious background educationally and IMS allows you to establish some type of foundation, uh, establish a definition of ministry. What does that mean for you? Yeah, uh, intro to ministry studies. Yeah, uh, what does that mean for you? What does it mean to do ministry? So during that class, I was kind of able to develop the the definition that my operational definition of ministry is doing life with people, and and that was kind of something that I I leaned on. And so when it came to my ministry project, um, how I want to do ministry, you know, beyond just the the four walls of the church, is to start a program. Um, like an after-school program that gives some type of ed education um, that is also kind of a, also a mentorship type of program. So that was kind of um, the framework that I used for my project. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think what Kenneth said is right on the nose about being presented with a really cool opportunity to develop for yourself what ministry is to you, because we're all coming in and we're we have these ideas about what we want to do and where we're going and a sense of goodness that's driving us potentially. But, um, and to also be in class with people who raise their hands and are like, I actually don't like this term, or I think this term doesn't match with what I'm doing, um, which then in turn challenges me and my assumptions about what I'm bringing to the table. And that project too was such, so you get to do this project where you design something that speaks to uh, the ministry that you want to do. And the feedback that I got on my project was, I think, one of the highlights of my first semester, because you're also sort of presenting like your spiritual baby to a room and getting other people from to vastly different traditions and perspectives and histories who can say, oh, I would nuance it in this way, or here's something you should read, or here's something you should engage that ended up making the end result so much richer and more exciting for me. Yeah, I definitely, I'm currently in IMS, so I'm I, I'm learning what y'all are uh, talking about. So uh, that's been really fun as kind of like a retrospective looking at my past three years. Um, and so uh, speaking to the senior uh, thesis capstone, um, there's many different variants you can, uh, or how it can take form this thesis. Mine is actually, um, one part kind of like a standard academic paper, but then the other uh, part is my uh, a more creative aspect. I'll be doing like half of it um, in a poetry format. So um, that really just already shows you kind of uh, the real versatility and kind of um, uh, creative liberty uh, we have um, to do our thesis because um, Ministry can mean so many different things to so many different traditions. Um, and even within one person, uh, just one's own life can really uh, affect that in so in a variety of ways. So um, this thesis project has been uh, really helpful, not only just uh, exploring uh, what I've been learning and kind of realizing here at HDS, um, kind of in my own ministry journey these past three years, uh, but also uh, because we have uh, our, our senior seminar um, little cohorts about like, I think, I think my cohorts about like eight. Um, we get to work with these um, seven other people all year uh, in solidarity on this writing thesis, thinking about it. Um, and we get to share our own unique ideas and get really good feedback 
questions. Um, and then also we get to hear from everyone else. So it's both kind of uh, like an inspiring session, but also very workshoppy and helpful. Um, and I feel uh, it really, I, I feel like it really also um, is an act of ministry and kind of just trying to gear all of us together and figure out how can we get this done in the best way we can that can uh, be understood by any person, you know, because all of us um, within even my small cohort, we come from so many different backgrounds, uh, vocations, like uh, one of uh, the students in my uh, class, like has a background in like law, I would never even think of like, the idea she's thrown on the table uh, and it's just amazing to hear and somehow it even relates to my own work. So um, I think uh, the senior thesis uh, is actually a, a really big benefit uh, because actually, uh, um, I guess a, a secret of a half the reason why I wanted to be uh, in a master of theological studies was because the thesis was optional and I didn't want to write another thesis coming out of undergrad, but here I am now <laughs> um, and I'm actually thankful for it. So um, I think that's just, uh, uh, I think just in, it speaks for itself that I'm actually happy that I am forced to do a thesis now, <laughs> even though that's, I came in not wanting to do one. Jay, Kenneth, uh, for sharing your, your time and your, and your stories. Thank you for those who are attending for your uh, attention. And thank you to the admissions team for making this evening possible. Uh, certainly, if you have further questions, you can direct them to the admissions team. But also, you can uh, email me. My, you can find me on the website under Ministry Studies. And I'd be happy to, uh, to correspond with you if you wanted to reach out that way. Uh, with that, I hand it back to Alessandra. All right, Dean, Teddy, Chantal, CJ, Kenneth, you are all so inspiring. Thank you for taking the time. I know midterm season is right around the cusp, if not already here. I learned a lot about your experiences in, in field education. Uh, the choose your own adventure is real. It's, it's inspiring and there's so much you can do at HDS, but it can also be intimidating too. So it was fascinating to hear about that. Our non-sectarian identity is something unique to Harvard Divinity School. We and you know it, it it shapes our identity as a school and and the values that we that we bring to our class and and community life. So, thank you all for for your authenticity, your your vulnerability. Again, for your time, you are incredible. Uh, the admissions team is so grateful to you, and thank you to our attendees too for taking the time out of your day, out of your busy schedules. We hope this was helpful to you. If you have any further questions um, specifically to the Master of Divinity Field Education, feel free again to contact Dean Teddy or the Office of Ministry Studies with that website there, or reach us via email, um, the admissions team directly if you have application related questions. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again, and we'll connect with you soon. Bye-bye.